Hey gang, Professor McElroy here. Uh, we're in week three, learning module three of digital animation one, Adobe Animate class. Uh, good job so far on uh, kind of tackling each of these little granular skills between the out of book assignments and the follow alongs and logging on live or watching the recordings as I kind of spoon feed the key features as we kind of learn the basics of animate here. Each of the lectures, I try to tackle some best practices, kind of basic tools and techniques. And then your book kind of shows you some different embellishments that you can do based on some of the kind of mini skills we're learning during our lecture. So good job so far. Uh, really the out of book projects is where we get to kind of flex our, what I absorbed so far part of the process. So I really kind of lean heavily on those. Uh, the step-by-steps are good to read, learn terminology. Some students are really most comfortable with a one, two, three, four, five environment. Other students are like so granular in it's gotta be exactly this word on this step that sometimes they get hung up a little bit in the process. And that's why we do the live lecture. And that's why we do some of the out of book stuff is to just connect the dots so that you don't have to be so granular in your learning unless that's the type of learner that you are. Uh, so we're gonna just try to navigate through the outcomes of the course and get the basics of animate that you may want to further play around with learn uh, push the envelope of continue to practice the beauty about adobe cc is that you have the software applications at your fingertips and as you learn little granular skills little software applications there might be things you want to do again you might decide on your portfolio website that you wanna make a little caricature animation or you wanna make a little animation to put into the uh, web banner of your website. Uh, some might be like, oh no, my out of books, the only thing I'm ever doing in this project, in this software <laughs> application, I do not like it. And that's okay too. Uh, but you need to be exposed to what the software is best used for when you see visual communication, design, social media, branding, that sort of thing. And you see things like this, that you at least know what the software application was, uh, kind of what it's best used for and places you might want to explore it. You can use it for as simple as just animating a logo. I mean, you can do simple things with it. So I just wanna expose you to the fact that a 2D animation program like Adobe Animate has a lot of branding capabilities. If it's something you're comfortable with as a visual communicator. Some people are static image only. Some people don't love kinetic movement. Some people don't love timeline. They don't like having to figure out how long something goes. They don't like storyboarding it. Not everyone likes that, but some people do. It's the same kind of lecture I give the students when they're like, I like to draw houses or I like to draw cars or I like to you know, build websites. Everybody's a little bit different, but you're being exposed to an umbrella of software applications and all kinds of professional output levels to find your groove, find what it is that you innately do well, you like to learn, you like to push and that sort of thing. So we're gonna keep plugging along tonight. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep the bone tool lecture to an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so, just so that we can see the process, learn the basics, kind of see what it can be used for. And then you can push the envelope of it if it's something that you enjoy or you like. Some students like frame by frame, that's it. They do all their animations like that. It does the basics for their web banner animations or any kind of basic 2D stuff they wanna do. And that's okay too. But you should know that there's more to the software application if it's something you want to explore. And I know I do design on the side with my design business and I can eat up out eight hours easily just working on a basic animation or building a multimedia solution or something like that. I was actually uh, researching a little bit today some of the iPad apps that Adobe's been coming out with and slowly releasing. And they have a new app called Rush that's like a, a iPad version of Premiere for video editing. And I'm like, mm, I'm gonna learn a little bit about this because Animate's gonna have some tools that are gonna be iPad specific that we might wanna explore kind of down the road. So just know we're learning some output and skills that apply to outputs and take them with a grain of salt, but I want you to learn them. I want you to see how they functionally work in a branding world because you're entering a field where it's all about selling products and services. It's all about the brand, but do know so multimedia designers are really critically important right now that companies are really looking for people that can do basic animations and multimedia solutions. It's because we live in an online world and online is free. 
So brands are looking for web designers and basic 2D animators and people that see things beyond static images. So just know we're exposing you to all these things because there is a demand for it. It doesn't mean that there isn't a happy home for static designing too, but just know that it is something out there that uh, is it a need corporate wise and beyond and that you might find a niche in it. Okay, that brings us to this week, the bone tool. We're gonna to take a look about how to uh, create poses and armatures and kind of see how the process works. Uh, in the announcement section, I put a zip file already for uh, this week's uh, lecture. So go ahead and download that zip file. Uh, it's got some Illustrator files in it. I already opened up the EPS files and converted them to Illustrator just so that we could bypass any Mac versus PC hiccups or anything that's going on there. Uh, I kind of already converted all those things for you. Just know they were EPS files. I opened them up in Illustrator. I broke them apart kind of released the clipping masks of them, which means they were basically frozen in a box. And then I saved them as Illustrator files so that we could more easily import them into Animate. We'll have to deal with some of the things that happen when you import Illustrator files into Adobe Animate. That's kind of the best practices things we're gonna to have to take a look at now, but we'll at least have a starting point already for our lecture for today. So I've already downloaded the zip file. You'll notice that I have three Illustrator files in there. I've got a basic background. I've got a sloth and a monkey. Uh, we're gonna animate a monkey a little bit on a vine. Maybe we'll have a sloth dance a little bit or something in the picture. Uh, we're gonna do some basic bone tool armature style poses. Uh, so you can see the fluidity of it, the nature of it, how it functions and works, uh, and how you might be interested uh, down the road in doing something like this. A few of you have already done the book assignment, so that's awesome. You got to see the little bicycle pedaling person. You got to see the little monkey swim, swinging his arm and stuff like that. That's basically what we're going to do tonight so that we can highlight kind of the order of process. Because sometimes in your book, it kind of already has things connected and built, and you're just editing them. I want to kind of start from scratch to show you how to bring things in and start the process, because oftentimes your book kind of pushes you to what I would consider more an intermediate step of the process. And sometimes just the very basic structural components of getting the elements in there and structured appropriately can be a bit challenging. So we'll start with these three files. Uh, we're going to bring them in just like we did for every other file we worked on. We're going to bring them in as three separate layers. We're going to name the layers. We're going to get them into the positioning scale proportion the way we want them. Uh, and then we'll start the posing navigation uh, bone structure, kind of skeletal structure of building these animations. So once you have it downloaded and unzipped, it should look something like this, uh, animate underscore lecture three and the three files in there. Uh, remember, I just converted them already for you. So just know they were EPS files before. Uh, we could use other files and break them apart. Uh, the problem with breaking them apart in Animate is you see all the pixels that make up the image if it's a raster-based image, which means selecting the pixels can be a little bit tricky. Some students like that because it gives it a raw, jagged edge of an object that you're working with. Uh, and that's a look and feel too, more pixelated in nature, but I like things to be smooth and crystal clear and a little bit more like an illustration style with a fill and a stroke. And that's what happens when you bring vector graphics in versus raster-based graphics. The beginning of your book deals with some photos being imported and animated on top of each other. Just know that down here, this is not the bone tool. This is just strictly uh, tweening animation going on here. So, all right, so we're gonna go in and create new, just like we've done in the previous two weeks. Week one, we did basic navigation, what the stage is or the artboard is, a basic timeline, what keyframes are and regular frames. Week two, we got into tweening, symbols, what the three symbols are, and basic action scripting. Tonight, we're going to get into the bone tool, a little bit more advanced animation, the process behind how it works, what it looks like, how you build it. And then we'll leave time at the end of class more as an open lab so we can kind of work on or finalize our out two out-of-book projects. Because uh, I think they're really important because they get the reinforcing component of, I get the idea of what I'm trying to learn here. Okay. So we're going to go in, we're just going to do a basic 16 by 9 again, high definition, 30 frames, action script, the basic stuff we've been doing all along. We're going to open it up and you'll see our uh, basic toolbar and everything going on here. So let's uh, 
kind of shift this up a little bit. I'm just gonna move things around a little bit so I can see what's going on. All right, so we have our timeline. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out our stage, just a skosh. Make sure we have everything we need here. I'm just stretching out my toolbar a little bit because I have a lot of things going on here. Uh, so I'm just kind of moving it so I have access to a little bit more of my panel. I'm gonna stretch this out. You'll notice the three little dots down here, uh, which we will access our bone tool from. The bone tool was something that was in Adobe Flash and then they started animate and they removed it. And I think there was like an uproar. So like 2015 or 2016 or so to about 2018, they removed the bone tool. Uh, and then all the designers are like, what are you doing? This is crazy. This was fluid motion. This is what we used. And they reintroduced the bone tool. And so here it is right here. And that's what we'll be using when we kind of get into our navigation part of what we got going on here. Actually, I can drag it and drop it right over there. So if you don't see it inside of your character or your tool palette, it's in these three little dots right here. Uh, so now we have access to it and we're gonna start our build process. Uh, and if you don't know, you can actually move your screen and actually move your toolbar outside of uh, the software window. So I don't know if you knew that, but you can actually just kind of move your windows around and kind of give yourself different views or different looks. Sometimes I'll move tool toolbars off the side of the program. So everyone has their file unzipped. They got everything the way they need it. Uh, we have our toolbar now. Everyone should have the bone tool available to them uh, right here by going to the more tools and dragging it over and dropping it in your menu. I made a little bit of coffee tonight. I'm in a fall mood kind of thing, you know, pumpkins, a spice that's out now already. And I don't know if there's any pumpkin lovers out there, but pumpkin is such a good spice. It should be all year round. <laughs> it should be all year round. It's kind of crazy that it's August. I didn't even think they picked pumpkins yet. So I don't know if they deep froze them and then they release them in August or what's going on. But I have to tell you, I do, I do like a good pumpkin. I like a good pumpkin anything, so uh, I'll take it. Uh, okay, gang. All right, so here we are in scene number one. Uh, we have our layer number one. Let's go in. We're going to import our background, which is our jungle, and we're going to build this thing just like we would for our basic uh, tweening animation kind of thing. So we'll go to the desktop. We'll go to animate lecture three. We'll import our jungle. It's going to ask to import the groups and all that good stuff. I'm going to click yes, okay. And it's going to bring my jungle in. Now you'll notice this thing is enormous. Let's get into my select selection tool. I got to get into transform and scale this thing down. Remember, we want to scale it down, but give us a little wiggle room. And so I'm scaling it down. But I want to make sure that I at least have some trees, some grassy hills, some sky. And so that's kind of my basic marker I have for my background down there. And I'm gonna go the beginning stages a little bit quicker, just so we, we can walk through it a little bit faster. It should become a little bit more innately natural to you. Notice that we don't have anything selected. So over here is our stage settings, right, from last week. Know that when we're in action scripting and stuff like that, it's the same process applies. If nothing is selected, we're working in the stage itself. Once we have objects selected, we're applying action scripting to the objects we have selected. Okay, so we have background. We're gonna go in and rename this jungle. Welcome to the jungle. Uh, there it is. Remember, it inserts a keyframe, which is frame number one. We're gonna build all three layers before we get into applying the different techniques we need. Notice that this has little blue boxes, which basically means that this object has separate stuff that is grouped together. So all these little boxes are things we can select. Uh, so let's draw a big selection box over the top and let's convert this to a basic graphic. We're not gonna move any of the elements in it. So we're just gonna convert it to a symbol and just name it uh, jungle underscore BG and just make it a basic graphic, click okay. 
And over here, our object property should change the graphic. We should start looking at the properties menus now as we do things in the program. That's a really good best practice because when you're in a multimedia tool, whether it's Premiere, After Effects, Animate, Adobe Dreamweaver, these are all multimedia tools. You should default to the properties window in any of those programs as you select objects, you manipulate objects, uh, you start to build this story because each one has properties associated with it. Those properties are usually a scripting Re, uh, language or relationship of some kind. Okay, so we have our object over here, Jungle BG is the instance, we have a graphic. Very good. All right. Now, let's get in. And I can actually trash the first one because I have my new one there. Okay, so let's go in and let's, uh, let's add a new layer. And let's import our next thing to our stage. Uh, we're going to import the monkey first because he's kind of big and he's going to be in the foreground. He's going to wiggle around a little bit and kind of twist the banana and things like that in his hand. So let's do that. It's going to ask us to import all the stuff and look how big he is. And also look how crystal clear he is. He's like really great. Uh, so here he is over here. Now I haven't moved over into my artboard area, right? He's not on technically my artboard stage or my canvas stage. I kind of have him off in the pasteboard, which means he doesn't really exist for my movie quite yet. The reason I did that is because he's actually made up of some parts. This little monkey guy is made up of parts, but I have to break him apart in order to show the parts. So I actually just right clicked on that full grouped object and did break apart. The reason I did break apart is because you're gonna notice that his mouth is a piece. This is a piece. This is a piece with his ears, right? We have all these pieces. If I grab the little ivy, that's its own piece. So now that I have it broken apart, it's not one big grouped object. I wanna make sure I group the things that I'm gonna to wanna to animate later. And by that, I mean, I wanna group like his belly as a, an object. I wanna group that thing as an object and I want his head to be a separate object. The reason I'm problem solving it in that way is because think of each of these things as being part of a skeletal armature. So his chest or his torso is the anchoring point. His head is the part on his neck that we're gonna hinge, that we can rotate and twist. And when I make his head one object, it means that I can animate inside the head, but armature animate him as a skeletal object. So I wanna select things that are parts of what would be the skeletal property. So his head is one thing, his torso is one thing, his left leg is one thing, his right leg is one thing, his left arm is one thing, his right arm is one thing, and his hands and feet are all separate objects. We want each one of those things to be grouped or converted to a symbol as a movie clip. The reason we want to do that is we might want to animate inside that grouping or that solidified object and make its own animation inside of it. He might want to wiggle, wiggle his fingers, move his toes. He might want to blink. He might want to smile to a frown or stick his tongue out or whatever the process is. We need it to be grouped in a way like a skeleton would be. So I don't know if you've ever gone to AC Moore or Michaels or taken a drawing class before that might be a figure drawing, but they actually make these little wood armatures that you can buy at AC Moore and Michaels, which are models made out of little carved wood pieces and the model can be moved. And actually Disney animators create little skeletal models of all their characters when they're drawing them and they can reposition them in static 3D form and then draw the new position digitally. So I don't know if you've ever seen that before. It's a little wooden head then has a little wooden body and the leg is made of joints that you can move around. In essence, that's what we're doing here. We need to take each section of this monkey and make it a movie symbol based on the fact that we're gonna build a skeletal frame around the monkey so that we can tilt his head and uh, move his arms and his hands and stuff. His tail can wiggle or sway a little bit. So we need those things to be separate. The reason I moved it over here was so that I can get easier access to each of the elements or each of the pieces. So let's zoom in a little bit on Mr. Monkey. So I'm just doing command plus and I'm using the space bar for the hand and we have the regular selection arrow selected. So if I click, there's his mouth, right? So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna hold down shift and I need to grab the three parts that make up his head, right? So I have his mouth, his eye cluster and his head. 
So I have all three of those things selected. I have them all selected because I now want to make those three things a movie that we call uh, monkey head or so I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to convert it to a symbol. I'm going to name it a uh, monkey underscore head. I'm going to make it a movie clip and I'm going to say OK. So now a couple of things you should know about the bone tool. We now have what's called this bounding box. And we have this little center node here, which is the anchor point. This anchor point point's gonna become really important as we build our skeletal structure of our 2D animation as we start to connect the parts. Uh, oftentimes your book will go to already having movie clips, already having the structural part built, already having a few ana armature style animatronic kind of structure already built and it just has you adjust it a little bit. We're gonna build it from scratch so you can see the thought process here. Okay, so we have the head first, then we need the body. And the body right now is the main belly and the little patch. So if yours isn't broken apart and yours is already grouped, we can go ahead and convert that to a, 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 a symbol movie clip and we're gonna call it monkey torso. That's okay, just this belly section right here. You'll notice another bounding box. And you'll also notice it's in front of the head because every time we do a symbol, in essence, it moves it to the front. It isn't a big deal right now. We're gonna connect all the parts and I'm gonna show you how to reorganize the elements so they stack the correct way inside their sub layers. So we have the head so far and we have the belly or the torso so far connected. So we got to do this in order so that we make sure that we get all of our parts. So next is going to be the arm, which is right here. So this is his right arm. So we're going to go ahead and right click on that, make it a symbol, call it a uh, monkey underscore uh, right arm, no spaces. So there we go. We have his right arm. While we're there, we might as well do his hand and we're gonna do the hand and the banana together because we're gonna have him just twirl the banana in his hand, kind of like move it up and down as we're uh, uh, animating this thing. So I'm gonna right click on that. I'm gonna convert to a symbol and do monkey underscore right hand. So there we go. We have his hand, we have his arm so far. We have the torso and the head. We gotta keep track of what we have here because we have to make sure that we do all the parts. All right, so let's make sure that arm is selected. And so we'll right click on it. We'll convert it to symbol. We'll do monkey underscore left arm. And yes, I'm doing the actual appropriateness of which arm is which arm versus doing, because this is on the right side of the screen, the right arm, because technically that isn't correct. So we're trying to organize this thing correctly. Uh, let's click on our hand next. Let's make sure that's all one piece. It isn't. You'll notice the fingers are separate from the palm. So let's make sure that we grab both pieces here. Oh, we have part of the hand of part of the arm. So I'm just gonna do undo. I'm just gonna do my undo command. You'll notice that's a uh, command Z just to go back before we make the symbol. I could break it apart too, but I want to make sure that I want to make sure that we don't have multiple names of the same thing. So I just did undo until it highlighted the arm, the hand with the banana. All right, so we got to break this apart. I didn't realize that his hand was part of the symbol. So we got to make sure we break that apart. Right click on the left arm, break it apart, and now go in and do convert symbol. If you right click on it, it'll just say break apart and you should have a box just around the hand. So monkey left arm. And so now let's make sure that we grab the two pieces of the hand. So we have the under part and we have that part. So let's do that. And then we'll right click on it, convert the symbol and we'll do monkey left hand. And you'll notice if you go over to the library tab over here from properties, 
that we just have it organized where it says monkey and then each of the pieces. The reason I do monkey underscore or whatever the object is, just so that I can look over here in my symbol library and quickly find what I'm looking for. So over in the library section is where it says monkey underscore and then each one of the objects. Are you okay? Were you able to? Okay. So let's take a quick peek. That's okay. You're fine. Yes, leg then foot, because I want to be able to wiggle his foot a little bit uh, in the animation process. So yeah, anytime you can separate shoes from jeans, uh, anything that has its own joint. So the ankle has a joint, I try to make it. Uh, if I was drawing this character myself, I would have actually separated his forearm from his upper bicep, because then I could, like I could really wiggle him a little bit. Now I'm gonna have to rotate him and distort him a little bit in order to get the same technique. But if I was creating it, I would have done that. I actually thought about chopping off his arm and making a duplicate copy of it. Yeah, so hold down shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're having trouble, click on the stalk and just move that out of the way because that should be all one object. And we can always move it back because his hand's just resting on the top of the stalk. So now you should have access to the fingers a little more easily. And you can actually take your mouse from just above and click and drag. And as long as you don't touch the arm, it should grab all the fingers in the hand. Now, just make sure that it has it all by once it's selected, move it out of the way a little bit just to make sure it's the whole hand and then move it back. Yep. Uh -huh. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to the leg and you'll notice that the leg is attached to the heel. So I'm gonna undo that and I need to break apart the left leg because the left leg is attached to the heel. So you should have a heel all by itself now once you do the break apart. Click on that and that should be just the leg. And so now we're gonna Convert it to a symbol, monkey left leg, and then click on the foot and make sure both pieces of the foot are selected and right click on it and do monkey underscore left foot. All right, so we got the beginnings of what we got going on here. And now we got to move on to the next part of the monkey. So let's just see what's going on with him. The right leg has his foot attached. So let's uh, break it apart. So the foot should be all by itself. And so now I don't know if you notice, but there is a little line there that's part of the leg. Not a big deal if you delete that, I guess, but let's go ahead and grab both of those things. Move his foot back. I think I already did his foot, right? Monkey, right, nope. Monkey, right foot. All right, so let's move that down. Now I got his foot. And so now let's just take a look at his tail and that is its own piece too. Uh, convert to a symbol, uh, monkey, underscore tail. So now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven symbols that are our, that are the monkey. So here he is. Now 
just for the sake of the process, I'm going to move the vine back and I'm going to make that a symbol. We're not, uh, let's make it a movie clip because we might want to wiggle the leaves or something, I guess. So I'm going to convert that to a symbol and make it uh, IV underscore swing. You need to group them. Yeah, the vine and the leaves should all be one object. One part of the break apart process, sometimes it'll just bring it in as separate pieces. I think when I was playing around with uh, the file the other day, I don't think the palms were part of the forearm. So when I imported it this time, it just attached it. And we just wanna make sure that the layer down here is now named monkey. And take a look at all the pieces. I mean, there's a fair number of pieces there. So just be aware of that. We got a lot of pieces going on here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I just called it uh, Ivy Swing or something. Yeah, yeah, Ivy under, I did a movie clip because we might wanna wiggle the leaves or something just so that you can see kind of how it goes. So we have Ivy Swing, Jungle BG, our Jungle Background AI, and then we have all of our monkey pieces that we have here. So now I have the monkey, the monkey layer. We're still working in uh, keyframe number one, still plugging along. Uh, we need to move this guy. I'm actually gonna make the Ivy, I think its own layer because I don't want the Ivy to move and I'm gonna anim animate the monkey on top of it, but we're gonna move it all and scale it first. So here it is. So just draw a big selection box over the top of it. Make sure you have the entire monkey and Ivy selected. Let's move him over here. I'm gonna use the transform tool just so that we can kind of make this monkey smaller. So I'm just holding down shift and I'm scaling him. So I'm gonna zoom into my artboard or my stage a little bit. And I'm going to scale him down so that the ivy is big. It's going to come off the edge right here. And I want the monkey to fill up a good chunk of the right side of the screen. So I'm going to scale him down so he's about like that. So he fills up a decent amount of my stage. So you can see it right there. And I want to make sure I position it so the ivy is off the page and these are two different images but they feel like they could be from the same story so we've scaled him down using the transform make sure you hold down shift so he scales proportionately make sure we get him all into his appropriate place kind of get him positioned we haven't connected him or made any skeletal structure yet for him all we're doing is build frame one all the layers we need and then we'll kind of take it from there So scale it down, get it in the position we need it to be with the monkey layer. And then I'm gonna select the Ivy swing. I'm just gonna copy it. I could drag and drop it from the symbol library too, but I'm just gonna copy it. So edit, copy or command C and delete it. And now I'm gonna insert a new layer and I'm gonna call it the Ivy layer. And I'm gonna do command V, paste it in. I'm gonna kind of put it in the position I want it in. So you can see it right there. And so the Ivy layer is now its own layer. I do need to move it under the monkey layer. So I need to click and drag it under the monkey layer. So let's move the layers up a little bit so you can see. So I'm just gonna click and drag it, right? We can move our layers in our layer palette. So I'm just gonna put it underneath. So it's in it's an appropriate position. So it should be jungle, ivy, monkey. So we just selected the ivy from the monkey layer and did edit, copy, or command C, deleted it from the monkey layer, inserted a new layer, did edit, paste, or command V to put it in its own thing, its own layer, right? So we just copied it, made a new layer, and pasted it on the new layer. 
Just make sure you delete it from the monkey layer so it's only in one place. And then you can move it to its spot and just make sure it's jungle layer, ivy layer, monkey layer. And then we'll wiggle the leaves or do something with the ivy once we kind of armatron or connect the bone tool for the monkey to kind of see how it works. Now, we do have a sloth that we also have to bring in because I thought I would dance them on the hillside or something. So we also have one more file that we have to import in that we can do the same technique as the monkey, but for the sloth. And so it'll just be a reinforcing process of how to break them apart and create the symbols based on the shapes that the sloth is made up of. So everyone should have a jungle layer, then an ivy layer, then a monkey layer, a keyframe, a keyframe, and a keyframe, all frame number one for the three layers. We should have the symbols on the left named somewhat like this. I mean, it's naming practice. So what you get most comfortable with as a sequence, you could have done left foot monkey or whatever that process is, but just make sure you start to kind of develop a process because you should name files based on client or character or application. So you kind of know it from a root directory and an asset folder directory. And also remember symbols can be imported and exported across multiple applications in Adobe. So I could open these symbols in Illustrator. I could import them into Premiere and After Effects. Like I can do a lot of things with these things because the idea of having a symbol is cross application in Adobe. I actually need to be better about that because I develop a lot of symbols and programs for clients and then I don't remember to use them over and over again. And then I end up creating a new concept or a new part and using a different piece for the client in the same theme when I could have maybe replicated some things that I already had. All right, so everyone should be at this point. So I'm gonna select the monkey layer and I'm gonna add a new layer and I'm going to do file import to stage and I'm gonna import my sloth vector. And here he is, and I'm, or she, and I'm gonna move him or her over to the pasteboard. They call that the pasteboard. Everything in that gray area is the pasteboard. The beauty about Illustrator, about Animate, uh, you have access to the pasteboard and you can actually see it. In design, you can too. The negative with like Photoshop is once you move it off the artboard or the canvas, in essence, it disappears. Even though it's there, you can't really see it. But this program allows you to at least see what's going on. All right, so I moved him over because we have to manipulate him. So you'll notice that the layer now is sloth. If it didn't auto name it for you, go ahead and give it a name. You should have four layers, jungle, ivy, monkey, and sloth. Now I'm gonna move it, zoom in a little bit for the sloth, because I gotta take a look at the sloth's parts. So his head is already a piece, so that's really good. His body is made up of two parts. So just be aware that the circle and the tan belly part are two different parts. So when we make them symbols, we need to make sure we make them and you'll notice the arms are separate. So there is a forearm and a bicep basically to the sloth. Now, problem solving for me, I'm gonna make sure the nails and the forearm are all one object because the sloth really doesn't have a hand. He kind of has these nails that are kind of part of his forearm. So when I make that a symbol, the three nails and the forearm are all gonna be one symbol. So let's start with the head, Right click on it, convert it to a symbol and name it sloth head as a movie clip. Click okay. So now you're gonna see in my libraries that everything's either monkey or sloth. It's gonna be really easy to help organize this thing and know where to find something. The beauty about the symbol library is I can double click, click on any one of these and get inside the symbol. So by naming them appropriately, if I need to make an edit inside of itself, I can easily double click over here and get inside of it. That becomes really important because they're all movie clips, which means if I decide to blink his eye, I can just double click on the sloth head and get inside of it. And I don't have to know where I am on the timeline. 
I don't have to access any point of the timeline to go into a symbol and make an edit to a symbol. So just no naming becomes really important. Okay, so we got to do the belly now. So I got to click the center belly and the little circle for the belly, make sure I have both of those things selected. And I named it torso on the monkey. So I should stick with the same process. So sloth torso. Yeah, make sure you have the tan and the dark. It's in front of the face. Don't worry about it right now. It's just the order that we're creating the symbols are putting them in front of each other. When we connect the parts, they're gonna move themselves around anyway. And then we're gonna to need to organize them after that too. So don't overly worry about this as long as you can access the pieces. Are you separating the top and bottom of the legs also? The top and bottom of the leg. So I'm going to do thigh and calf or upper leg and lower leg, whatever anatomically works best for you. So let's go right. So I'm going to do sloth underscore right uh, thigh. Yeah, and then the calf is the other. I actually drew this guy, so I made him have separate joints to his arm so that it made life a little bit easier. Uh, all right, so left thigh, sloth, left thigh, okay, so the nails I'm going to make part of the lower leg that way because I don't really have like a foot per se so I'm going to attach the nails to the lower leg and the nails to the forearm in essence in this illustration so look, remember I can take my selection box and just draw a selection box over the three nails and over the lower leg and it's easier than holding down shift and clicking on each thing so sloth right calf and then selection box, sloth, left, calf. If you didn't know anatomy terminology, here's a great time to start learning <laughs> terminology because it makes creating symbols a lot easier. Okay, so I need, I need this lower arm here. What do we got going on here? There it is. I need the lower arm. I'm going to move the head out of the way for a minute because it keeps getting in my way for my arm. So convert symbol, uh, sloth, right forearm. Sloth, left forearm. Oh, that isn't the forearm. Guy, <laughs> let's, right, let's undo that. Sloth, right bicep. Sloth, left bicep. Uh, convert to symbol. Yep. You just want to make sure that you have every part of him as a movie clip so that we can create our structure correctly. All right, and then I can move the head back. It doesn't matter because when I connect all these pieces, uh, it's gonna create an armature and kind of reorganize the thing for us. Uh, if it makes you feel better before we start that process, you can always click on the symbol and do arrange, bring to front, if you want the head in front. 
So now let's just do a quick catalog of uh, how many pieces we have going on here. So we have one, symbols that is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. It looks like 22. So we should have something roughly in the ballpark of 22 symbols. And once we have that, I'm gonna draw a big selection box over the top of him. And I'm gonna move him into my movie. And I'm going to scale him down holding shift. And I thought I would scale him down pretty far so he's in the background over here and maybe I'll have him do a little dance or something. <laughs> Jumping jacks or something back in the corner here. So there he is. And so now we have our monkey armature, kind of all the symbols created for our armature. We have our sloth now all connected. We have our static graphic, which is our jungle background. We have our ivy as its own layer. So notice we have four layers, background to foreground. Uh, in theory, I could probably move the monkey layer in front of the sloth layer because he is way up here closer to us. So the sloth is a little bit more middle ground. It's semantics because they're not crossing paths. Yeah, roughly in that ballpark. So how many do you have? Hey. Only 10? Are you talking about, did you only count the sloth? Yeah. Oh, oh cause like we counted the monkey and the sloth. Oh, okay, so okay. you have like 20 something. All right, see how many you got. One body part. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. All right, we're in the rough ballpark here. All right, so now we're just gonna decide how long we're gonna animate this thing for. Let's just do 60 frames. The reason we're gonna do that is we're gonna create, uh, the insert the frames for the background, the jungle background. So I'm just highlighting it and just doing insert frame, just so that we have something to hold our timeline. So that's how long our timeline is. It's a total of two seconds. So whatever we're doing with these little guys, we got to do it kind of quickly because it's only two seconds. So his tail's going to wiggle. Maybe his, the banana will move up towards his mouth. He'll move a leg or two. Once we have the jungle filled out to 60, sec to 60 frames or two seconds, let's lock that layer because we're not going to mess around with that anymore. That's locked. So just click on your little lock symbol. And then the ivy, we may move inside of itself, but it's not gonna really sway per se, although we could make it sway. Um, let's just add frames to the ivy layer. So the bottom two layers, the jungle layer and the ivy layer is just gonna be a static 60 frames or two seconds. So we'll just highlight it, we'll insert frame. And Let's make sure we don't highlight that. You may have noticed I just clicked on frame number 60 and did insert frame oh, yeah, and it will, like it will fit. The same frame length. I just highlighted all of them and just drug all of them to 60. So you don't want to do that because we're going to actually, in, well, well then we're going to click inside the time. Yeah, but we it. haven't connected the armature yet so okay. don't fill that in yet so only the bottom two okay. and let's lock those two and so basically it runs for two seconds but we only see our dudes or dudettes for the first frame of our two seconds right i'm going to move my little tracker back to frame number one Okay, so we're gonna tackle the monkey first. So I'm gonna lock the sloth just so that I don't select him in any part of the process. So we're gonna lock the sloth just so that we're only dealing with the monkey. In theory, we could hide the sloth too because he's not really, he's not in the game yet. It's only gonna be the monkey.
And so I just clicked on keyframe number one of the monkey just so that you can see everything that's going on with the monkey. I actually could just move it over to my selection arrow and you'll see all of these symbols and all of these little circles, right? All of the symbols and all the little circles. So I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit. And I'm gonna shrink down my timeline a little bit so I can see the majority of the monkey's pieces, right? So I've zoomed in so I can kind of see the majority of, this, of the monkey's pieces. And I'm actually gonna deselect now by just tapping my mouse over here in the pasteboard. And I'm gonna click just on his belly for a minute. Cause you're gonna notice this little dot right here. And this little dot is in essence, the anchor point for the bounding box of this object. And the bounding box is this little blue box that determines the width and the height of a symbol or a grouped object in Adobe. And this is the center anchor point. And in most cases, the center anchor point is good because when you scale and rotate and do things to this object, you wanna kind of do it from the center point, right? Versus moving that thing around. So if we move that little dot to the upper left-hand corner and we did rotate, it would rotate it on that axis, not the center dot. Well, the center dot is fine for the torso because we're gonna connect everything off of the center dot. But we need to decide where that anchor or pivot point is going to be for our bone tool based on like how we want this thing to pivot. So if we select the head, you're gonna notice that the dot for the head is all the way up in the center. Well, is the joint for your head like all the way up in the center? No, it's like more down here, right? Down towards kind of the bottom where your neck would be to pivot. So we need to move that little center dot. So if we go over to the transform tool, you're gonna notice I can actually select the center dot and move it. I'm gonna move it down a little bit more towards what would be kind of the bottom of his head, right? I'm gonna move it down towards the bottom of his head because that's kind of where I would want to swivel or rotate the monkey. If it's up here, it's like, it's like the center of the earth. You're like swiveling the entire thing. If it's down at the bottom, it's more the natural vertebrae motion of the illustration. So that brings us to what the next problem is. If we click on the forearm, the arm area, look at where the dot is. Well, in theory, it should be here. Well, and then we would have one here, but for here, here, so that we can move the arm appropriately. So I've got to move that pivot point. So I'm going to move it to where like his rotator cup is, <laughs> kind of the pocket inside of his shoulder where his arm would move, which then brings us to the hand. And you're going to notice that the dot is in the center of his hand, and it really needs to be over here more towards where his wrist would be, right? That's the pivot point. Now, think of it as that stays where it is, and as I do the rotation, it moves it around the joint. It rotates it around the joint. So your hand's not spinning like a, a what do you call the little thing on the stick where you blow the wind and it, pinwheel. the pinwheel, yes. So it doesn't spin like a pinwheel. It actually spins like a wrist joint with a hand, a little more natural. So that brings us to our left arm. We've got to move that to his shoulder. You notice that I'm not actually moving it all the way to the corner. I'm just moving it to a natural spot, which would be about where that shift is happening. Now it's gonna build a wireframe for us that's invisible, but it needs to be the place that naturally this thing would move so that we could slowly fluidly rotate this thing around. All right, so we'll go to the hand next. We're gonna move that kind of down towards that wrist palm area. Then we're gonna to go to the leg and we've gotta basically do every symbol. So let's kind of go to that hip joint. Let's go to the hand. Let's move that down to kind of that wrist area. Let's move to the next leg, get it into the hip area. Now I'm not moving it into the empty area of the bounding box. I'm putting it where it would naturally be kind of a hip connector, just so that you can kind of see the connection points. So then I got to go to this foot. 
I got to move this to kind of like that ankle area. So I got to make sure everything is connected. Now, we're going to deal with the tail like it's kind of like a lizard or something. We're going to move it kind of to the end here, a little more natural spot for it. Uh, it's all one piece versus having it be like a, a, a skeletal thing that has multiple bones in it. Actually, I don't know. It's a it's muscle in like a lizard and stuff because you can like cut the tail off and then it regrows. There's so, a bone in it, though. Uh, there literally is. Are you sure? Yes. Because, yeah, because if you pop their tail off, you can literally see the bone. No. Yes, you can. Like I'm the little sure the little iguana looking lizards we have that run around here. If you step on their tail, I don't think there's, but I think it's only muscle and it regenerates itself. I think it doesn't be, mean that maybe iguanas. Be bone, though, because when you move it, 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 you can't keep bending it. It has like a stopping point, like where the bones would stop curling. Yeah, it's tailbone. I don't that's know. Like tailbone. <laughs> yeah, but that's like technically not. Swiftly part of the tail. Like a human's tailbone, you know, it's like just where the I'm tail sure attaches. Okay, all right. Bones and a tail of a for this monkey, he only has a tailbone and then it's gonna connect from that point. All right, so now that I have everything kind of moved in, into the spot. Cartilage, cartilage. Ah, no bone. <laughs> no bone, cartilage. Uh, okay, all right, so now we have everything positioned in its joints kind of appropriately where we wanna put this thing. Uh, and for best practice, we're gonna start in the torso area because the extremities attach to the torso area. The head attaches to the vertebrae, which is part of the torso area. Everything kind of connects off the torso. So we're gonna use that as the starting point for our skeletal structure. Uh, keeping in mind that the first connection point we make will determine the anchor point of the object. So if there was something that needed the, in essence, the anchor part to be not the torso, then you would start with that symbol or part of the grouping and connect from that because that's what it connects from. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to select the torso so you can kind of see the point, see where everything is and kind of get a gist for it. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this little circle is what we're going to connect off of. Now, the way I like to do it is I like to connect torso to head and then connect the arms and the hands uh, and kind of spawn it off the main extremities, I guess, or main structure of the object. So if it's an animal, it's the torso to the head, if it's a person, torso to a head. Um, if it's an object of some kind, like let's say it's a bicycle or something like that, I'll take the frame and connect it to the wheels, which then connects to the seat post, which then connects to the handlebars. So I use that center anchor point to kind of get it started. Now, we're gonna select the bone tool and we're gonna go right over here to kind of that center dot area and we're gonna click and drag. And you're gonna notice that you get this kind of directional thing going on this arm and we're gonna drag it up to the head and we're gonna let it go. All right, and we're gonna take that center point and we're gonna drag over to the top arm in essence. See, it's right there. They snap to them. So they snap to them. So now notice I dragged from torso to head, then I went back and did torso to arm, upper arm. Now I'm gonna go from upper arm to hand upper arm to hand. So I'm going torso to main extremities and then out main extremities. So now I'm gonna to go torso and torso to hand. Undo, undo, just so you can see what I'm doing. Right, just so you can kind of see the process of where I'm going to. Now, ideally, and you'll see it in the sloth, I actually have the 
forearm and the bicep kind of a separate joint. So, and then we'll go here to the hip, the hip to the foot, and then torso to hip, hip to foot. And then torso to tail. And so now you're gonna see there's an armature layer that's been created above the monkey layer that's connecting what's called a pose for the monkey. We're just building a skeletal structure of the monkey that we can then manipulate in what's called poses. And as we manipulate the poses, it's how it fluidly connects the motion. Now in your book, oftentimes they give you that thing like already constructed as a skeletal structure, and then you're manipulating the poses. Cool, uh, monkey layer just turned into armature. It's okay. okay. Yeah, because that's that right. that's the skeletal yeah. structure floating on top of the monkey himself. Oh, it'll be there. Yeah. Yes. So if you re-click on the keyframe down there, it'll show you the structure, right? It's invisible. It's just a place for us to pivot and animate based on the motion we're going to create. And also remember these things are individual symbols. So we can actually go into the head and animate the head separate from the armatures separate from the poses that we're gonna insert. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So there he is. I'm gonna move back. Now, here's where we have to make a little adjustment. So you're gonna notice that he is in front of, some of the pieces are in front of. So you see how like, uh, his leg is in front of his torso, which is in front of his tail. Like we have some issues going on here. So if we click on his torso and right click and do bring to front, you're gonna notice that it moves in front of the arms. It doesn't affect the armatures at all. It just reorganizes the sub layers. So we need the torso to be in front of his leg and arms and we need his head. So see how I click on the head, right click, arrange, bring to front, and the head is in front of the body, right? So we want the head to kind of be in the front. We want the torso in front of the arms and legs. We want the hands and feet in front of the arms and legs. And last but not least, we want the tail to be behind the leg. So I sent that to back. So now this looks like it looked when we imported it, it just has the structural elements built into it. Are we okay? So if we click on that keyframe, it should look like that and everything should be appropriate. So we shouldn't see like a black line connecting through the torso because the torso should be in front of it. All right, so now we have 30 frames per second. I'm trying to do the math of how, how much I want this guy to move. So let's go to, uh, let's go to frame five and let's right click and insert a pose. Now, we need to move this monkey a little bit. We've got to pivot this monkey a little bit. And so let's 
zoom in. And I selected just the tail. So you're gonna notice this thing pivots, right? And it's a pendulum. I'm on the armature layer and at frame number five, I did, I right clicked and I did insert a pose, right? So now it's green on the armature layer with a new keyframe. So once you have that inserted, go ahead and deselect. So like click your mouse anywhere outside in the pasteboard. Now click on just the tail. Right? So let's switch to the transform tool and go just off the edge and rotate the tail a little bit. So here it is. Now you're gonna notice, you see how it's swiveling? based on where the anchor point is. If it was in the middle, this thing would be spinning like a pinwheel. But because we connected it at the joint, the last bone in the body before the cartilage of the tail, we can, sw we can swivel it <laughs> behind, behind the leg. So I don't know, do we wanna swivel it a little to the left? So do you see it's, it swivels? And then just for the sake of the process, let's insert another keyframe at like, uh, let's make it swivel kind of fast. So let's go at like frame uh, eight insert a pose and let's move the tail a little that way, right? So the tail should wiggle. See how it's wiggling? And the key to the process is that the skeleton's built appropriately so that it's a little easier to swivel. So we're gonna swivel the tail first and now let's go up and maybe it, uh, we're moving this guy pretty quick. So like at a half a second, we have to move his arm. So let's click on like keyframe 15. Let's insert a pose and let's move his, Let's move his arm up, right? So this is the piece we wanna move a little bit. So let's swivel that, grab the, I'm just gonna drag that a little bit. Yep. Yeah, so I'm just moving him up a little bit. And so now you'll see that his hand is moving. So there it is. I like to move each of the pieces, each of the parts and kind of navigate him through the process. And so there he is moving along. And we can go in and adjust him just a skosh. And so I'm gonna slowly just adjust his arms, his legs, tilt his head a little bit. So every, I don't know, 
five frames or so, insert a pose and make an adjustment to his positioning. Does it matter what we do? It doesn't matter, no. We're just learning the structural technique of the armature and the poses and how he moves. So let's go here, we'll insert a pose. Rotate his head a little bit. And let's go in, I don't know, roughly in the next five. There he is kind of sliding his hand down the ivy. He's wiggling, he's moving. Let's go insert another one. Oh, maybe. Are you going until 60? Yeah, I'm going to try to move him. He's getting a little slick on his ivy there. Sliding down the ivy ever so slightly. And I think I'm going to swing his leg out. Then I maybe will rock his head back. So he's just. Moving around a little bit. All right, so next. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. So he's bobbing now, his tail's wiggling, he's moving. I don't know, let's move his tail back that way. I might be a little too far. Let's, uh, so I move the banana up. Let's move his arm back. Let's swim the leg back. He's swiveling. Let's tilt his head back. All right, let's go and sort of pose. Let's his hand back up. So 
Uh, move this leg. Let's move it back a little bit. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, you can copy the pose and then paste the pose in in a different spot. Okay. If you want to cheat. Does the, <laughs> does the ending does the ending frame have to be the beginning same as the beginning? No. Okay, because I didn't know if it was like you know how sometimes if you don't loop it right, it looks like it's like it like jerks. Yeah, we're gonna put a stop command on there, and then we don't have to worry about it. But yeah, if you run something off the screen, it'll then pick up back where it started and run off the screen. So that's the way that I always kind of made it easier on myself when I was making movies. Sometimes I would take them off the screen so they reproduce themselves back at the beginning and then they... <laughs> yeah, he does have a little hiccup because he doesn't end yeah, up in the it, same it spot yeah. where he was supposed That's to start. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make mine the same again. Okay. I don't know. I just think it looks better. So if I select, okay. okay, so to fix that problem, I can, I can like, uh, delete the last thing or remove the last thing. No, you just, so, you so just, you copy, just copy the first frame. Right? Literally says paste copy yeah. pose, but yeah. then go with the last frame and say paste pose. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot with my animations I've done because I don't want it to look like it's like jerking around. So I try Even to though it makes it. a big leap from the, because yeah, sometimes you pay, but like, well, that's obvious. sometimes I, I go too like, far the, down the like, road. The wheel I, made. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get it to like spin perfect and it would be spinning right now, barely turn it each time, but then it would like try to go backwards spin. I would be like, so yeah. I had to fix the way I like how uh -huh. far I spun it, girl be crazy. Yeah. Then I finally got it where it barely does anything and it makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's, I'm going to go into the, uh, let's go into the monkey head. So over in my library, I can just double click and go into the symbol itself. So you see how I went into the symbol itself. And remember, it has a timeline inside of itself. So I want to do something to the monkey in order to make it obvious that he's, his head's moving a little bit. So I don't know if I want to break it apart and move his eyebrow so it looks like he's going do, 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 or something or like, like that. Ears or, something. or wiggle his ears a little bit. So now that we're in the symbol itself, we can break apart this guy, right? It's separate from the animation. See the animation's out here. When I double click, I'm inside the animation. So I can do whatever to him that I want to do. So let's see, is, is his ear a piece? It's, it has two pieces. It has those two lines there. So if you wanted to do something with that, you got to group those together before you rotate them or whatever. But I want to try to make an adjustment where it doesn't look like it's going like super yeah. fast. So in two seconds, maybe at one second, I'll lower an eyebrow and maybe like wiggle an ear or something like that. So let's make sure that everything I have access to it. Yep, the eyebrow I do. The ear, I need to select the pieces of the ear just to make sure that I have them. And you can group them. Command G and just group the ear if you want to. So let's do that. Just do command G. Now I could do a symbol inside of a symbol and all that good stuff if I wanted to. And I could make the ear its own symbol and all that, but I'm just trying to get him. Are you gonna move both ears? Yeah, I think I'm gonna wiggle them both out. And I don't know if the ears move out, should the eyebrow go down? I think I'm just gonna have one ear. 
All right, so at one second. So I'm gonna insert a keyframe at one second. And then I'm going to, how far are you gonna rotate the ear? Just one turn out and the eyebrow, I don't know, down a little bit. So there it is. So he looks like. What, what helmet, how far did you make it? Three seconds? So I moved him out to a second to wiggle. And then I'm just gonna, for the sake of the process, Yes, that's okay. So let me just do that. And then. Uh, let's wiggle it back. I'm going to take this. Oh. Okay, so uh, press uh, go back like it's a control or whatever. Let's do that. So there he is. All right, so I got the little wiggle going. Yeah, I have to say his head moving and his ears, his head moving and his brow, the ears moving. So we double clicked on the symbol. Yeah, now remember, you have to break them apart and then you have to insert a keyframe at five, at one second and move the things a little bit. So, right? So we're not gonna make symbols inside of symbols. We'll just kind of select the things and move them a little bit. So when I double click on my symbol, see how I inserted a keyframe moving his eyebrow. You double click right here on the icon next to monkey head. And you'll actually notice that I'm inside the yeah, symbol. Let's make sure that you double clicked over here because if you double clicked on the on the movie, you'll actually gray out everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So double click over here so you get inside the symbol. Are we creating like it's a, just easier because it makes it a whiteboard. Yeah, I make mine a motion screen so it moves smoother. Yeah, whatever you want to like do. Better. Yeah, yeah, fine. We could earn, insert a symbol where he's like, whatever his noise is, insert a wave file. No, we're just basically just inserting a couple of keyframes and making him wiggle at one second. And then select just the eyebrow and use the arrow keys and move it up or down or wherever you want it to go. I made it go down. Mm -hmm. on, on keyframe one, no keyframe uh one second is where it oh, okay. one he's static oh, that's at keyframe one second he moves a little bit it still confuses me sometimes when i press play on the timeline and it doesn't show the i know you have to test the movie I know that's because it's nested inside and that's a scripting command and it has to be published quotation marks and for it for it to pick itself up. I don't 
You can move it that way, yeah. I like to break it apart so that when I select on it, you're not inside of itself. When you double click, it means you're actually in the grouping of it and you're moving it up. Yeah. I break it apart just so that it's its own object. But as long as you know that when you're double clicking and it grays out, it means you're inside of a grouping that you're modifying it in. Not a big deal. It's just some people get confused if they double click too many times because you're get, actually continuing to get inside of things versus being just, like, objects. Behind frame things inside itself and I'll, I would go to the thing and I'd be like why is it not doing what I want it to and then I would find that I had like six things out inside of yeah it. Like, oh traditionally you'll see tabs up here and, and they'll just saw, right? keep going more and more inside of it yeah okay, so it happens pretty quick though right like, about one second. in a second dude his eye goes up his eyebrow goes up we wiggled his ears a little bit we rotated them out so he so if I double click here, see his ears. I mean, he could wink if we wanted him to, I don't know, one second. What if his eye gets big? Ew. <laughs> Oh, Whoa. I need to watch that. I'd be scared. <laughs> <of my> <laughs> Let's see. He looks like he got punched or something. <laughs> Let's test the movie. Whoa, he did Oh well. Okay, so that's going right. So at one second. Now that's gonna repeat every second. Every second. That no, I mean, okay, so the motion we just created. Yes. Just for the head. Now because it's at one second, when it'll just it'll loop that. It'll loop. Seconds. Remember that's a movie inside the symbol. Okay. So, so it'll so just keep head, going. So yeah. So even so even though we only have the, the head moving for one second. Yes. And we're playing the two second movie. It's Ye gonna repeat itself twice. Yes. Okay. That's yes. Right. Okay. Yes. And if we don't, if we did a stop command, it would continue uh, until to tilt his head, okay. unless we put an action command in there at the end of two seconds saying stop at this frame. And then it'll only do it twice inside of the movie. He didn't keep doing it though. He only like did it once. So the, eye, the eyebrow movement and the ear wiggle. It should go back to the beginning yeah, when it loops it. itself, right? Yeah, it's good that second. So you see how it goes back? Now I didn't reinsert the pose to so see how my guy appears here and then dis disappears. <laughs> but yeah, as long as it's running, it'll just keep going. Hence the jellyfish going up in the little start screen thing. And yeah, but see, okay, so yours is staying there. Not... So do you have? So do you have? See how it goes there, and then goes back. Oh no, I didn't. Okay, all right. I'm just gonna lock the monkey and lock the armature. This is so I literally don't even have a monkey layer anymore. Mine just turned into the once armature. the armature attaches itself, the poses kind of lock the monkey and move him along. Yeah, because like in my layer, I don't have a layer that says monkey. It just I it just just armature and I just named it armature monkey armature. When I did mine, I inserted a monkey layer and imported the oh, monkey okay. and it that's, gave it its an armature know. layer. Because I'm like, I didn't do that. So I mean I can just get rid of that or hide it or whatever because it's not it doesn't matter uh so let's yeah, the monkey layer doesn't matter but it has to be there because it needs the armature it doesn't need to be there no, it just means that once right you way. attach the symbols it created an armature layer and grouped everything together in order to create its poses 
So you said it's just a movie. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And then just being on a monkey arm show. That's what I did. Monkey yeah. So do we want to try the sloth really quickly and make an armature out of the sloth yes. and give him a couple of poses? Try to do it on your own. Is so, it going to be the same? Is it going to be two seconds just like this one? Two seconds just like this one. Maybe move his arms, his legs, and get him to do a jumping jack or something. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on him just so that you can see he's there. I'm going to zoom in on him. So remember, the first step is to move that dot, right? We got to position the dot. And if it makes life a little bit easier, move his head over here because we haven't attached him yet. So I need like his shoulder and then his wrist. Okay, so the way the thighs are shaped though, kind of weird. So you have a hip joint and a knee well, joint. I mean, the way that the, the box is drawn around it, mm -hmm. it's, just, no, it's almost like it's there already, right? Like, I don't want to put it in the wrong So you see how I put it in his hip socket of his hip? Okay, yeah. Kind of where it would connect to the body. Yeah. And then I did the knee joint because the foot's kind of attached to the calf in essence. And the hand and the claws are together. So I just attached it kind of at the elbow area. They move so slow that no one will recognize it anymore. <laughs> what was I read? They're like the cleanest animal. Did I read that or no? Because you always see them, you always see them dirty. You ever go to the Naples Zoo? They have a sloth there and they and it's like pristinely clean and they bring it out on their arm. And they're like the prettiest, like the fur and everything on them. They're spectacular when they're clean. It's just, they're so slow and they crawl so slow. They're like wicked dirty. While I'm in bone tool, am I able to move his head out of my way so I can connect to the, the, to the upper, like the upper arms, like here? Because it, you can't, it doesn't let you do it past his head. So you see what I'm doing? You see how it finds the joint? You see how it finds the spot? That's not, connecting to, that's not where it connects to his shoulders. I know. I probably put that in a bad spot. I probably should have put <laughs> that a little bit lower. Because that's his wrist, which is technically his elbow. And then his thigh. Yeah, because it, it's going right, right to like his wrist area. And there's his knee and his knee. And then remember, you got to send it to back. So I've got to either bring his head to front. Yeah, I just want you to kind of replicate the process so you feel a little bit comfortable with the Whole process. I name this monkey movement. I name this one sloth movement. And so I'll just, oh gosh, he's not going to move. I mean, he's a sloth. So what am I supposed to do? Just like tilt his head and move an arm or something over two seconds. I mean, over two seconds, he's barely going to move. Uh, so let's see here. I had him doing jumping jacks earlier. Like I moved his arms down and his legs out like a squat. 
and he was ju doing jumping jacks, but let's just go to one second. Insert a pose. So there he is, his head's moving. And so, so should I just, man, there isn't much in two seconds a slots can do. So let's see here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need to move his. What? Yeah, his arms like let's, dislocated let's, because they're not technically it, connected. Yeah, body. yeah, yeah. The hips are he a little. Even, like, do not. So, oh. <laughs> so let's do that. I rotate I that. Like back and forth. Okay, so uh, a range. There you go. He's 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 doing a slight dance move. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe let me go into the sloth's head here and give him an animation at least. What can we do with his head here? You know what? Let's insert in a second a keyframe. And then we'll insert it two seconds a keyframe. And then at one second, let's add some eyeballs. Nope, I want to do. So let's make them white. No stroke. They're gonna be tough to see here. So how big are they? Uh, let's do, let's see what we have here. Let's So that thing's a little jacked up. So let's get in here. I'm gonna move his eyeballs up. Let me make sure that there aren't any circles. There he is. One second. This is no separate. There, he's got a little personality now. All right, so let's test him. I've got a little. All right. All right, I gotta save this file, save as uh, jungle animation.
Mine's got a separate one for the book. No, I'm keeping my mom by sloth on behind his head. I just moved his head back and forth like he was sleeping. Say that again. Oh, he's got a separate one. Oh, yeah, 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 because I, I drew him as solid pieces, like puzzle pieces. All right, gang, I'm going to stop the recording at this spot because uh, I went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I don't want the recording to go too long. This is our uh, bone tool animation for this week. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, but keep, uh, keep my window open for you guys so that the recording doesn't go too long.